Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. Story number one. Forked Code, Forked Tongues. Written by Alt Cipher. Karen. The latest software patch. Why is it five times the size of the last one? Aaron hunched over his keyboard and stared into his display. We had several bug patches come due at the same time. Karen said from the other side of the office. That's odd. I don't remember that many code reviews. Aaron said. I thought maybe it had something to do with that secret meeting of yours. Karen rolled her chair to the side so she could see Aaron around all the computers and lav gear. Let it go, Aaron. What? Some big shot from the government shows up. Has you and half a dozen bosses locked up for three days. You tell me, Z. And I'm supposed to forget about it. Not going to happen. Aaron, this translator is the single most important piece of technology in this galaxy. Humans have hundreds of languages, and we've been figuring out how to translate far longer than any other species out there. How? English alone has more dialects than Debruxi, Panania, and Talang 4 have languages combined. This device has created a revolution in trade, diplomacy, interstellar relations, and a thousand other things with humans in the middle of it. We have a monopoly on automated translators across the galaxy. Of course the government is going to be super interested in our work. There is no conspiracy here. Just a bunch of very boring, technical discussions. Why didn't they invite me? Or any other programmer? First, you guys had other work that you needed to be doing. That was right before the 1.3 release, remember? Second, you get too many people in a meeting and it becomes unmanageable. Third, Mr. Dalton. You remember Mr. Dalton? How he came in to see about investing and you went off on a half-hour tangent about how capitalism is evil. Ring a bell, Karen said. It's not that capitalism is evil. It's that people can't be stopped. I don't care. I saw the live show the first time around, and I'm not looking for an encore, Karen said. The point is, you're not housebroken yet, and the bosses wanted someone who wouldn't piddle on the carpet. If that's all there was, then why have you been so cagey about telling me what happened? Karen rolled back to her workstation. Because you like conspiracy theories too much, I tell you it's just a boring discussion about marketing and databases. You come up with some wild idea about government coup. That's not true. Tell me about how changing the gold standard would save us all, Karen said. Just as Aaron took a deep breath to launch into a diatribe, she heard a hundred times. Karen put her hand up and said, Don't. That was just to prove my point. You're a good coder, Aaron, but you don't have the head for the business side of business. There aren't any conspiracies, and real life is not some cheap soap opera with a giant plot twist every week. Aaron grunted and went back to typing. A few hours later, after lunch, he said, Did you see the news about Bacall? They're threatening to put a military embargo around Earth if we don't voluntarily share our translator technology. They've really stepped up their threats. Uh-huh, Karen said without looking up from her work. You know, they've got the largest military in the sector, maybe in the galaxy. If they cut us off, there's nothing we'd be able to do. Mm-hmm, Karen said. Man, I'd miss the Pyrian cheese. It's like the sort of spicy, sort of creamy mix that really makes a... Uh... Are you even listening to me? Hmm? Sorry, I was in the middle of something. What's up? The Bacal, threatening to embargo us if we don't give them our translated tech. Ring a bell? Aaron asked. Yeah, 
I think I did see something about that. Well, I'm sure everything will work out. Karen said she kept her head buried in the code for the rest of the afternoon. Two months later, Aaron caught Karen in the cafeteria. So, Aaron said, looks like the Bacal situation went a different way. Karen paid for her lunch and walked away with Aaron in tow. She found a booth with a beautiful view overlooking a small lake outside her office. A dozen mallards paddled slowly across the glass surface of the water. A few lazy clouds drifted across the deep blue sky. Aaron flopped down in the seat across from Karen. She could already feel her stomach start to turn. The Hina attacked the Bacal. Some kind of research outburst. The Hina just destroyed it. The Bacal are hitting the roof, Aaron said. Karen chewed her food with no enthusiasm. Her jaw worked mechanically and her eyes held a blank gaze. Why would the Hina go out of their way to pick a fight? The Bacal outnumbered them, but the Hina are more advanced. At least that's what the news said this morning. Aaron said around mouthfuls of his sandwich. Don't know, Karen said. Wang is the Bacal expert. Maybe you should go and ask him. She took another bite and looked out at the ducks. She envied them with their ability to fly away from people who annoyed them. Hey, Aaron said. Didn't you and Wang do some intensive work just recently? He's a linguist. I'm a programmer. Working together is literally our jobs, Karen said. Yeah, but you guys were sequestered for almost a week, Aaron said. He nodded his head as he chewed. You've been more secretive lately, going to a lot of meetings with VPs, locked away in a secure lab. Makes me wonder. Karen put a fork down. Aaron, she said. You're letting your imagination run away with you. I've been, uh, quite recently, not secretive. I just, um, I haven't felt like talking much. She looked out the window, lost in thought. I've been going through some things, and it's really... I uh, just need to keep busy. Oh, Aaron said. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean... I mean, uh, I never thought... It's okay, Karen said. You didn't know... But I'd appreciate a little time. It'll all work out, but it's tough getting through it. I... Sure, Car, you, you know you can talk to me any time you want, right? Karen nodded and forced a thin smile. I know, Aaron. Thank you. That evening, Karen sat in a small, secured room, talking on a heavily encrypted line. Secretary Paulson... It's Karen. One of my colleagues is getting a little nosy. On the plus side, he's a conspiracy nut, so nobody's gonna take him seriously. I told him I've been going through some personal issues and needed some space. But I am required to let you know of any issues like this. Yes, thank you, Karen. Well, keep an eye on him. Since I've got you here, I wanted to thank you again for your work on the translator update. It worked even better than we'd hoped, the secretary said. Well, Wang was the one who really did the linguistic magic. I just buried it in the code. He tells me the Hina culture and language is very heavy on respect. Changing a few verb tenses and noun forms makes an innocuous statement into a grave insult. Impressive work, nonetheless. The Hina and Bacal are at each other's throats. They'll knock each other down a peg or two before this is all over. How can you be sure you'll contain this war? If you'll forgive me saying so, this seems risky, Karen said. I appreciate your candor. We have multiple plans in place for whichever eventuality comes to fruition. I can't discuss operational details, you understand. But we don't want this to get any more out of hand than you do. I assure you, the secretary said. Guess I'll have to trust you, Karen said. I'll do my best to live up to it. 
When do you think you'll be able to reverse the change for the proper translation between Hina and Bacal? We have a regular update scheduled at the end of the quarter. We can put it in there. Doing an outer cycle update will raise a lot of questions. Excellent. Let's plan on that. If you'll excuse me now, I am late for a meeting. Again, fantastic work. Karin disconnected and sat alone in the small room for a time, staring at the flat grey walls, wondering how many Hina and Rakal would die, wondering if she did the right thing. End of story. Story number two. Sir, written by underscore sky underscore underscore. What's with these humans? They are supposed to be a crack troops. Octopus, like Alien, asked, his body littered with cybernetic enhancements. I do not understand the question, asked the nanite swarm floating just next to him. They have a reputation, but I do not see it. Their bodies seem fragile, equipment lacking. I never fought alongside them, but I hear they always win, replied the nanite swarm. I hope so. I really hope so. His tentacles twitched. Where is the enemy? The enemy AI will be attacking here soon. Excellent. That frecker steamrolled the last division I commanded. I'm in for some payback. The octopus-like alien then turned towards the humans. It was time for an inspiring speech. Terrans, this is your time to shine. The enemy is sending the best it has. Their main AI is personally deployed here. And the Commonwealth deemed you worthy to serve under me and the rest of the elite. Prove yourselves today and the war is over. Hoorah! Human soldiers shouted, surprisingly eager to face what might easily be a superior enemy. Well, the humans are well entrenched. I must give them that. We will be able to use bunkers in our advantage, the nanite swarm noticed. Absolutely, and do not forget the orbital support too, the octopus like alien added. Then a robust looking human with an artificial eye and short grey hair rushed towards him. Doctor sir, scouts report the enemy movement. The human salute as firm as stone. I am aware of it, are your men ready sergeant? Octo asked. They were born ready, sir. That's the philosophy I like to hear, Octo said as he returned the salute to the human who rushed back towards his own soldiers. The Nanite Swarm and the Octo exchanged a few more words before, on the horizon, one was able to see the synthetic warriors charging towards their position. Tension as dense as it gets. Sergeant, Asked the commanding alien. Isn't the enemy trying to contact us? Huh? Well, yes, sir. Yelled the human. As expected, it's too confident. Keep your men at the ready and connect me to the enemy. Connect, sir? But they're just broadcasting the usual calls for surrender. I am aware of that, snapped the octo. Connect me. Yes, sir. In the very next moment, the voice of the enemy AI echoed all over their position. You stand only 21.13% chance of victory. Surrender now and avoid the unnecessary battle. Not true. Our estimates say that we have 51.1% chance of winning. It is you who should surrender. Anger radiating out from Octo's voice. Ha! Ah. Impossible. Your estimates are incorrect, argued the opposing AI. Not so. I am sending data on our troop deployment to you now. Nocto, sir, what are you doing? The human sergeant was obviously shocked. I am winning us this war, human. By blowing our cover? When it sees it was outsmarted by our deployment, it will understand the folly of its analysis. It will see we're holding the superior position and will thus surrender. Yeah, not this crap again. Frick, replied the sergeant. Fire at will, he gave the order. No, what are you doing? 
We can win this by debate and argument. The odds are on our side. Frick the odds, sir, was the only answer he got from the human. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.